What's the most horrific NSFW act someone you know did? Story 1. Worked with a guy who got done for manslaughter. He bashed someone's head in with a table at a pub. This was after he stabbed a guy in the chest with darts. This was over a darts game. He also served time for beating a policeman into a coma with a policeman's own truncheon after the policeman caught him breaking into a car. Story 2. A friend I grew up in got a job in a care home for vulnerable children and teens, mostly kids with severe learning difficulties or mental health issues or brain damage, etc. He was in his mid-twenties and was caught having sex in the care home with a 14-year-old girl. Not only was she 14, she also had learning difficulties so severe there was no way she would have been able to consent. He her. He got four years, served about three. He's out now, but no one has seen him since. I assume he moved away to prevent getting his head kicked in. Nasty bastard. It was always a bit weird, but no idea he was capable of something like that. Story 3. A former coworker murdered his friend when the friend agreed to work with the police to bring down my coworker for stealing a shipment of human growth hormone. Apparently, it was a vicious murder. They burned the body, if I remember correctly, but it's been a while. My coworker ended up being on the run for many years and was eventually turned in after his story ran on America's Most Wanted. His fiance saw it and he confessed who he was to her. She waited until he was asleep and went to a payphone to turn him in. Story 4. I had an acquaintance who owned an iron working shop. Some employee of his thought he was fabulously wealthy because he was well off. The jerkball employee went to their house and tortured four of them to death to get their fabulous wealth, $40,000. Unfortunately, the housekeeper was there as well, and they tortured her too. The junkies ordered pizza and left their DNA to be found. Burned the house. Really very sad. This guy was known to hire guys who had criminal records and give them a second chance. His son was 10 years old. Story 5. I only met him once as a kid, but my granddad's brother-in-law. He approached me and my mom in a cafe. I was 8 and tried starting normal conversational small talk. My mom panicked and asked him what the hell he was doing out of prison. He brushed her question off and he knelt down to talk to me, which made my mom pick me up, sling me over her shoulder, and run back to the car. I just remember being so scared by her sudden moves, I quietly burst into tears in the car, and we drove halfway home. Mom then stopped in a supermarket car park, got in the back, unbuckled me, and we cuddled in the back for what felt like days, most likely an hour tops. I had no clue what was happening, but mom called me down, and she kept saying, you're safe, I love you, over and over. I found out years later, he slit my granddad's sister, his wife's throat, and brutally beat her to death. Hence my mom's fear. Story 6. Guy I went to school with was real calm, very smart, and everyone loved him. He was a gentle person from what I remember. He had lost his mom a couple of years before this. She was a nurse and they found her dead in a hospital room during her shift. Unknown causes. Our senior year of high school, dude is a championship wrestler, dominating his grades and just doing good. He lived with his dad who was a police officer for years and years. Everything was normal and the day was finished out. His dad did not show up for work that evening and the police department sent someone to go knock on his door. They found the house ransacked and his dad lying in bed with a single gunshot wound to the head. Deceased. Later that night, they called my grandmother in for questioning because she cleaned their house once a week. Not much later than that, the guy I went to school with broke down and confessed that they had come home on lunch to ask for money and he and his dad got in an argument. His dad laid down like normal for his shift and he took his dad's service pistol and shot him. And after realizing what he'd done, he'd freaked out and turned the house upside down to make it look like a robbery, then went and finished the day at school to try to make it seem like he had no clue what had happened. Shocked everyone. Story 7. My father beat the sh** out of my mother and myself when I was a toddler. I have an uneven skull because of it. Until I found out, I thought it was a birth defect. I didn't find this out from my mother until I was an adult when I had to take him to court because he had opened numerous credit cards with my social security number when I was a kid and had tanked my credit by the time I was 18. Story 8. When I was a kid, I was in the hospital for some surgery. In the next bed over was a kid who was younger than me in a full body cast. Turns out his dad was drunk and ran him over with a car. But that's not the worst part. His dad, apparently a hopeless alcoholic, later committed suicide. But that's not the worst part. A few years ago, I decided to look for the kid on the internet and see how he was doing. Turns out he killed his wife with a chainsaw and then killed himself with a chainsaw. But that's not the worst part. Their 14-year-old son found them. That would f*** you up for life. Story 9. When we were in school, this boy from our year, we were 13 years old or so at the time, was with his two older brothers and kidnapped a man. The man was dating their sister and at that time, people were very protective if he dated someone's sister. They took him to a petrol station and covered him in petrol. Then they took him to a forest and burned him alive. All three brothers went to prison, but since they were minors, I don't think they got that many years. When I was 21 or 22, I bumped into the guy from my year in a takeaway, and he tells me he's working at the local supermarket. A few months later, I end up working in that same supermarket, and he goes to me. Anyone messes with you? Let me know. I'm thinking, nah, I don't want them dead in a forest. Story 10. One of my childhood friends was diagnosed as schizophrenic in his early 20s, went off his meds for a bit of time and had an episode, bludgeoned his mom to death, who was my parents' friend. They found him in a fetal position, crying and not understanding what happened. He committed suicide a few years later while in jail. Story 11. My mother tried to kill my father when I was a toddler by taping up the windows in our apartment. She turned on the gas at the stove, took me, and left. She knew my dad would light a cigarette upon returning home. She was banking on it. Luckily, my dad was able to smell the gas leaking under the door. Story 12. Someone I was close friends with till college was 
helping his wife's daughters from her first marriage for years, he was also filming it and distributed the material and was teaching other pedos internet security and how to use the dark web. A laptop involved in a sting in the UK undid all his careful trail covering. The investigation revealed over a decade of traceable data of his activities, building a CP criminal network. I don't like to think about it. Story 13. I lived down the road from Terry Joe Voller. He rode my bus every day and was also a violent, horrible person. He murdered a five-year-old because he had feelings for the kid's mom, and I guess she didn't feel the same. So he murdered one of the kids, took a picture of the child's body, and sent it to the child's mom, and told her he was going to kill her other kids that he was babysitting if she didn't come home right now. He got life. Then he beat his cellmate to death with his bare hands so brutally, they considered the death penalty. He got life again. Story 14. My mom attempted suicide in front of me. She called me downstairs to witness her take a bottle of pills and told me it was my fault. I was nine. Mom survived, but I've never been able to let that go. She still believes she's fine and everyone else is the problem. I have compassion for her, but I can't have her in my life. I'm a 42-year-old mother, and I can't fathom doing that. Story 15. My uncle turned out to be a pedophile assaulting his foster children often. The only reason he was caught and charged is because cousin managed to film him in the act and turn it in to the police. He got eight years in prison only, and my cousin committed suicide a couple of years later. May he rest in peace. Story 16. A friend was brutally murdered a few years back. Due to my relationship with him and having met his assailant a few times, I cooperated with investigators. I was privy to details not released to the press or initial public records. They didn't just stab him to death. He was tortured. Then they took cash advances at his bank's ATMs to go on a drug spree, drove his beloved Mustang all over, then partied in his house for a few days. The victim was gay and their murderer immediately tried to pin his disappearance on a soldier he was seeing. Unfortunately, the stench of decay prompted police to get a search warrant. Motherfucker had the receipt in his pocket for the container he bought for my friend's body. I still can't walk down a storage solutions aisle. All I can think about is what size bin would accommodate someone my friend's size. Dude had a rap sheet and a public defender, ended up doing a plea deal will be locked up for at least a few decades with good behavior, he should never even hope of seeing the light of day after he butchered someone like an animal, then hung out in the next room like it was nothing. Story 17. One day while we were in school, an acquaintance's father killed their mother and then himself and set their house on fire. Their father was somewhat abusive and their mother was thinking of leaving him. It completely changed the acquaintance. He was only 13, but had to basically grow up and mature overnight. He and his siblings had to move in with their grandmother with basically nothing but the clothes on their backs. He was able to get a driver's license at 13 because their grandma couldn't drive so he could help. Somehow, against all odds, he and his siblings are all perfectly normal people. Story 18. 30-year-old meth head went on an hour-long rampage in his car, driving along the wrong side of the highways of my town, attempting to crash head-on with other road users. He was unsuccessful until he crashed head-on with my 17-year-old brother. The meth head was doing an estimated 140 kilometers per hour, and my brother was doing 110, the speed limit. He just got sentenced to 10 years in jail yesterday, and my brother now has lifelong injuries from the crash. Weirdest part of it all is that all the media and news reports of the accident were either silenced or made to be removed, and we don't know why. Story 19. I don't know how to quantify this among all the horrific things I've seen in this thread, but I wanted to get it off my chest for a long time, and I've never been able to tell anyone in real life because it's not my story to tell. When my mom was six years old, she was molested by a neighbor. She told her mom, nothing happened to the neighbor. That's all I know for sure. My mom was very vague about the details, but based on what I know happened and the timing of it all, I believe her mom blamed her and threatened to harm her if her father took any action. Her father left, which was a long time coming anyway, with good intentions, but ultimately left her alone in a dangerous situation. Her mom brainwashed her over several years into believing she had done something wrong, so when she was finally allowed to seek help as a teenager, the pastor at their church, never a mental health professional, she couldn't argue when her mom told the pastor that she was a slut who tempted men for fun. She was never allowed to be alone with men as a child because she might do something to cause them to rape her. Ultimately, she was kicked out at 17 when her mom found out she was sexually active. This forced her into a very dangerous living situation. I was born two years later. I always hated my grandmother and refused to see her whenever I had a say. When I was old enough, I cut her off entirely. She showed up at my grad party and I left. This was all before I knew what she did to my mom. Sometimes you can just smell the evil rolling off someone. My mom tried patching things up with her last year and now constantly complains to me that her boundaries aren't being respected. It's infuriating, but it's her journey, so I vent on Reddit, I guess. Story 20. My brother robbed a pizza guy, twice. He called for a pizza in a park and when the pizza man arrived, he pulled a knife on him. High on Xanax, I assume, he went to sleep, woke up thinking it was a dream and said, wow, that was a great idea, I better try it tonight. So he did the exact same thing and the pizza guy came and hit him with a golf club. My brother absolutely deserved it. Pizza delivery guys are like the holy saints of the modern world and shouldn't be touched or messed with. Story 21. A friend was arrested on over 70 charges, including drugging and raping children. There was a whole police operation involved. A surgeon I'd had for two surgeries and was following up on complications was arrested for child porn. As someone who was abused as a child, it sort of felt like it was inescapable. 
Story 23. One of my long-term employees was often late, claiming his neighbors had kept him up all night, or he was unwell with migraines, etc. My wife suffers with migraines, and we had shitty neighbors too, so I gave him the benefit of the doubt. One day, he didn't show up, and I couldn't get a hold of him. After a few hours, the police show up to tell me his place was raided at dawn, and they've arrested him for downloading and distributing child porn. Turns out he was spending all night doing that nasty shit and then showing up for work knackered, and I accepted his apologies and excuses for years because he was good at his job. Story 24. Priest at an elementary school was convicted for child pornography. He was recorded on message boards talking about how much he wanted to physically hurt children at the school, and that he had urinated and ejaculated into the communion wine. Not sure if verified. The stuff he had possession of was on the order of torture and worse. Big local names, including a local official, rushed to his defense. He confessed and blamed it on some devil temptation bullshit. Story 5. My sister's friend's mom, her boyfriend, and the mom's cousin all killed my sister's friend in such a horrific way. They strangled her, sexually assaulted her, dismembered her, and burned her body in the bathroom tub all on the girl's 10th birthday. The weeks before this happened, the mom and the little girl came to my sister's 10th birthday party and met our whole family. We had pictures of them on Facebook and my sister even almost stayed over for the night. Horrible. Our local news is currently showing live videos of the trial for the three that murdered her. I cannot watch it and I do not want my sister watching it because she's still too young to know what happened to her friend. I've been trying to protect her and make sure she doesn't find out more than what we've told, which is that she has passed away. Hearing it in our news literally breaks my heart. Story 26. A friend in college, grad student while I was undergrad, back in the early 2000s, suffered from schizophrenia, but was well controlled on meds. Long story short, his student insurance stopped covering his meds, and he was unable to get in to see a psych before he ran out. Out of pocket was nearly a grand a month. He tried rationing meds but declined rapidly, and he and his mom spent three days frantically trying to find an inpatient bed with a psych unit that could take him. I know he was very worried that he would hurt somebody and could feel himself slipping away. On the fourth day, he shot and killed his pregnant wife. He then tried to kill himself, but succeeded only in shooting off his own lower jaw. Thing is that when his head was right, he was such a good guy, and he was so excited to be a dad. It was all he talked about some days. That, and he loved his wife like crazy. Always talked about how out of his league she was, and how lucky he was. As far as I know, he's still in jail. Still has no mandible, and now, that he's back on meds, is fully cognizant of what he's done. I cannot imagine his grief and guilt. I guess instead of looking for a hospital bed, he should have just gotten himself arrested. Our US mental health system, if you can even call it that, is a very, very bad joke. Edit. He didn't decline in just three days. Best I can tell, it was more like three weeks. Towards the end, he and his mom were trying to find him an inpatient bed because just restarting meds wasn't going to fix things once he had declined that much. What I know, I learned from talking to his mother afterwards, so there are big gaps in my knowledge. He wasn't able to speak at that point and transferred directly to jail once he was well enough. Story 27. My former high school band director suddenly didn't show up to school. Plus, it was on a Friday night game. I was scared that he got into some freak accident since he never misses. A few days later, it was announced he resigned after rumors of him sending sexual text messages. There was another incident several years before where he made sexual contact with a student taking lessons and he supposedly tried giving her alcohol. It was hard to believe how someone you've respected for so long has this type of history. It makes you wonder how someone can do this and have it hidden for so long. Looking back, it was obvious the greater attention to female students. I was one of the only 8 to 9 males who got leadership roles in marching band compared to 30 plus females. Not that those females didn't deserve to be sexual leaders, straw majors, etc. I just wanted to point out the huge margin. He was originally given two 20-year sentences for 40 years in prison, but it got reduced to one year plus five years of probation. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this, plus comment down your favorite story and a story of your own.